So do you guys know what kind of tree this is? How about this one? If not, I'm gonna show you how to identify different trees during winter when the leaves are bare and all you have to go by is their bark. I'm Mike and this is Outside Chronicles. I love everything outside and if you do too, you're gonna to wanna to click that subscribe button, hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. Identifying trees during winter can be a little bit harder. The leaves are off the trees and a lot of the guides that you go by identify it based on the leaf shape. Usually there's snow here in western New York and all you have to go by is the bark. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different trees that are really easy to identify by the bark and some that are a little bit tricky. And if you want to learn more about tree identification, I suggest these two books. This is the Peterson's Field Guide to Eastern Trees. It has a dichotomous key where it presents you with several questions that only have two answers to arrive at a tree identification. And then this is Sibley's Guide to Trees, which is set up a little bit differently but has some fantastic illustrations of the bark and leaves and twigs of the different trees. I'm at Reinstein Woods. This is a nature preserve here in western New York and it's not very big but it is one of the very few old growth forest areas. There's a lot of great examples of mature trees where we can identify them from the bark. And this tree behind me is one of the easiest ones to identify in the winter. This is a beech tree. It's characteristic by this nice smooth bark, usually a little bit green in color. And these are the common trees that you see people carving initials into. They grow just about anywhere and they'll grow very large and there's some great examples of some really humongous beech trees here at Rheinstein. Actually the champion beech tree of New York State is here. Unfortunately it died a couple years ago. Beech trees are also susceptible to what's called beech bark disease and it's kind of like a one-two punch. This non-native insect will actually create cracks in the bark and a native fungus, a canker fungus, will take hold and end up killing the tree. What you'll see is the main tree dying within 10 years and because beech trees can sprout from its roots you'll see all of these baby beech trees all around the infected beech tree. They'll end up getting inf infected eventually but it's kind of neat to see that. Beech trees are also commonly marcescent which means it doesn't necessarily drop its leaves. You can see a bunch of beech trees around here. This one has all its leaves out but a bunch of the beech trees around here have these nice golden leaves still on them here in December. So this is the other tree from my intro. This is a black cherry. They're very easy to identify because their bark looks like burnt corn flakes or burnt potato chips. They grow really big, they're very common, and they're a pretty cool tree. This is a great example of an ash tree. They grow very straight, very tall. It's a hardwood, they make baseball bats out of it. And very easy to distinguish this bark. It has this characteristic of a diamond or herringbone pattern. And what you'll also find is in our area we have what's called the ash borer beetle. You'll see a lot of little holes in the ash trees and then the bark kind of flakes off and Birds will peck to get at the beetles to feed on them. There's a bunch of trees that are marked here that are uh, infected with the ash borer. It's pretty much decimated all of the ash trees in western New York. So here's an example of an infected ash tree. You can see they've actually tagged it. You can see all these little holes in the tree and that's the ash borer beetle going into the tree. So this is a maple tree, actually a red maple. I kind of cheated and looked at the leaves on the ground. Maple are a hard tree to figure out which species it is. The bark is kind of scaly and gets smoother as you go up, but between the red maple, the soft maple, the sugar maple, the hard maple, and the silver maple, the bark can look very different between species and also at different ages of the trees. Once you see the bark, you can pretty much determine it's a maple tree, but by the bark, it's really hard to figure out what species it is. 
and if you come across a maple tree with this gill-like pattern, you can be assured that it's a red maple. It's the only species that exhibits this pattern. However, not every red maple is going to have this gill-like bark. And right here is a sugar maple. You can see it's a little bit flakier. It's a more mature version, uh, but the bark is quite a bit different than that red maple. And if you come upon a tree and you think it's a maple, maybe it's something else, what you can do is look at the twig pattern. If you can reach a twig or a branch, maples, ashes, and dogwoods are the only ones that have an opposite twig pattern. So think of the acronym MAD. So if you look at this branch, see how the twigs are opposite. Not all of them are gonna be opposite, but once you find one, as you can see, this one's not opposite here, nor is this one, but it looks like it broke off. Um, once you find one, then you know it's either a maple, ash, or dogwood. Another easy tree to identify from its bark is a birch tree. This one right here is a yellow birch. You can see it's kind of a golden yellow color, real flaky. Its bark just kind of peels off. And if you peel it back, you can see it's very yellow and golden when you peel it back. Another characteristic of a yellow birch is its twigs. If you just crack a twig open, you can smell or taste wintergreen. And I always get a kick out of this tree. It's a beech tree and a cherry tree. I call them brothers from another mother, growing together right from their base. Amazing. This is another one that it's not really easy to determine exactly from the bark, but once you see it, you know it. This is a red oak. You can see the furrows with like the silvery color here that's a little bit smooth. They're easy to identify once you see one. Here we have a spruce tree and these were actually planted here by the landowners. And you can know it's a spruce tree because you see this main twig coming off and all of the needles are below the main twig. That's pretty distinctive of a spruce. These are specifically Norway spruce. And if we take a look at the bark, the bark of a spruce tree is much like a cherry tree. It kind of has that burnt cornflake, burnt potato chip kind of look to it. It's a little bit lighter, and as you see, when it peels off, it's kind of uh, reddish brown underneath. So it's just about lunchtime. There's a few species here that I didn't see, a couple of pines, uh, hickory, and sycamore that I'd like to put in this video. So I'm gonna head home, get some lunch, and then I'm gonna try to go out into the woods by my neighborhood and see if I can find those trees. So I was just leaving Reinstein, and in the parking lot, I could see this tree. This is a aspen tree. I can't tell if it's, I think it's a quaking aspen. The leaves around here don't seem big enough to be a big tooth aspen. And what's distinctive about this tree is it's got this nice brown furrowed bark. But as you go up the tree, it goes to this bone white. Aspen trees can grow from the roots. And here's a smaller aspen tree right next to this larger one. The world's largest organism is called pando in the west and it's uh, several thousand acres of aspen trees, all from one parent. So they are all genetically the same. Very cool. So I've had a nice lunch, turkey salad sandwich, care of Mrs. Outside Chronicles, and now I'm in the woods behind my house. And first thing I came upon was this beech tree with the beech bark disease. And you can see how it's got these cankers and sores on it. And these two bigger trees, sprouted all of these other smaller trees in response to the disease. And you can see they're all infected too. This is a great example of a hemlock tree. See, it's got these long furrowed bark, a little bit flaky, a little brown underneath, and it's got needles 
And the best way to identify that this is a hemlock is to look underneath the needles and you can see two parallel white lines under the needle. One of my favorite trees, they're really prevalent in the Adirondacks and that's actually what gives the water that tinted tea color is the tannins from the hemlock trees. This is a great example of one of my favorite trees. This is called the shagbark hickory. And you can see its bark is super shaggy and can be just kind of peeled off all the way up to the top. It's a really distinctive tree in the winter and definitely one of my favorites. So I'm walking around just to find a sycamore tree. I thought there were a few back here. I found a small one, but I came across a much mature shagbark hickory. And you can see how shaggy their bark is and just kind of peels off. Really cool. Shaggy all the way up to the top. The final tree that's super distinctive to pick out its bark in winter is the sycamore tree, another one of my favorites. I thought there were more around here. There's the creek that runs through here. Sycamores are usually found near water. I see a ton of them through the Letchworth Gorge on the Genesee River and where I fish on 18 Mile Creek. Sycamores can grow to be huge trees. Actually, the oldest tree in Buffalo is a sycamore. Sycamore trees have this flaky brown, light brown bark and underneath it's kind of gray, a little bit orange in color. And what's really cool about these guys is they mature and the bark grows up. Their bark looks like it's camouflage. So there you have several tree species that can be identified by the bark in wintertime when there's no leaves to use as clues. And if you wanna learn more about tree identification, I highly suggest those two guides, Peterson's and Sibley's. I'll link them below in the description. And if you found value out of this video, be sure to click that like button. And if you want to see other outdoor adventures, gear reviews, how-tos, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Mm -hmm.